So today, assuming I survived the cough that I've got, we're going to dive into some product photography with a little bit of beauty and fashion photo angle to it. Let's head behind the shot. Hi, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel. For those of you new to the show, this is the show where we try and get inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion and all those stories and challenges that happen in between. You can find a blog post for this episode, along with any links that we mention, a sample gallery of my guest work. Those are over at behindtheshot.tv. Also, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, the links are in the description down below the like and subscribe button on YouTube. And a quick reminder for you, if you're watching on YouTube, I had somebody complain on a video the other day that they were seven minutes in and the phrase they used was the waffle continues. I'm not sure what that means, but they were upset that I didn't get to the topic fast enough. Look, I put chapter markers, timestamp markers on all my YouTube videos. Jump to any portion of the videos that you want. And I mentioned early, if I survive the cough, I've got bronchitis. Now, normally when I do my shows, especially the video, the audio you can cut and stuff, but I don't like to cut a ton out. Like a lot of people really tighten up the audio and video on their shows. I don't like to do that. My shows tend to be more of a conversation with my guest. And it's not just an interview. I ask a question, they answer, repeat, and you know, rinse and repeat. It's a conversation. And to me, there's something powerful about hearing somebody think. So I usually don't do a lot of cuts in my video. But because of the bronchitis, if I have a coughing attack today, you may see some really bad splice edits just so that you don't have to hear it. I normally have a mute switch but a, or a cough button, but that's in for service. So just warning ahead of time, I will mute the coughs. But if you see me on camera for a little bit dying or looking down to find the mute button on my mixer, that's why that's happening. So let's get into the show. I want to welcome to the show Houston-based beauty and fashion photographer Lenworth Johnson. Lenworth, how are you, buddy? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing so good. It's good to see you again. Absolutely. We had so, so much fun at Imogen. We did, didn't we? Uh, so you're in Texas. Yes. I'm in California, but I want to start in Kentucky because I went to my first Imaging USA in January. It was in Louisville, Kentucky. Part of the reason I went is because I collect whiskeys and Louisville, Kentucky is the bourbon trail, but uh, mm -hmm. I went by the platypod booth to say hi to my friends at the platypod booth. And that's where I met you because we are both platypod pros. So I'm curious, what did you think about imaging this year? I I like imaging. Um, I mainly use imaging as networking. I will attend a few classes here and there, but mainly for networking, you know, meet other pros and get to catch up with other friends and, and see what's going on in the industry. Yeah, I completely agree with you. The networking for imaging, for WPPI, for all of these conferences, I'm about to go to NAB. The networking for all of these is what matters to me, meeting people like you, catching up with friends, things like that. If you've never been to a conference like WPPI in Vegas every year or imaging, which kind of moves around, I think it's in Texas next year, isn't it? It's in Dallas, I think, next year. Yes, it's in Dallas, yes. Hopefully that'll be, hopefully it'll be, I didn't want to say better. Uh, hopefully it'll be bigger because the one thing I noticed with the Louisville imaging is it was hard to get to. Like from Southern California, getting a nonstop flight into Louisville was almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do a layover. Louisville is not an easy city for a lot of people to get to, at least on the West Coast, without a one or two hour layover. Hopefully yeah. Dallas will, will fix some of that. I, I want to get into you a little bit. So I always start my shows. This is what the person was complaining about on that other show is they wanted to get to the topic. Where's the product photography? But I always start my shows with a get to know my guest type segment. And th the reason for that is I want people to get to know you so that when we get into the photo, they kind of understand why they should listen to somebody with your skill set. I mentioned you're in Houston, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. But you're originally, I believe, from Jamaica? Yes, I am from Jamaica. What and brings somebody from US Jamaica to Texas? Yeah, well, I used to, so after I left college, I attended college in Jamaica. And after I left, I worked in television for a while. And, you know, with television, I'm always on the road. Uh, 
And I seen a lot. So I had a friend who lived here and he invited me here. So when I came the first time, I was like, okay, I like this place. So I went back home and in my letter, and then I moved to Houston. <laughs> well, that's I, you know, I, where the whole Houston journey started. We, we are better off for having you here, I will say. The other thing that I mentioned in the intro of you is I think of you and you, I believe, kind of market yourself mainly as a beauty and fashion photographer. Yes. But today, we're going to talk about some of your product photography because some of your, your, your product stuff is fantastic. How do those combine for you? Well, the product stuff all came about during COVID. So during COVID, um, first of all, I have a small home studio. So bringing in people was a bit of a challenge during the COVID time. And I sat here one day and was like, I need something to shoot. It's going to drive me crazy. So I started, you know, looking on products, I started photographing products and then, you know, came on to a couple of challenges as, as you know, products are a lot of shiny objects and the reflectancy and, and all of that. So I started figuring out how to do it, how to solve those problems. Right. And then I decided, okay, I want to do cosmetics, you know, beauty products because it works hand in hand with fashion and beauty. So I think it's a full circle thing to do the, the fashion and beauty products. So that's kind of how it all got started during COVID. So what I want to go into then is something on your website. On your about page, you, you make an interesting comment. You say that you combine your background in graphic design and yes. photography in your work. So tell me a little bit about the graphic design background and how does that design side influence the photography side? Okay, um, when I went to college, my major was graphic design. I actually went to college to study graphic design. And when I started, um, they looked at me and they said, you need to choose a minor. And I'm like, I don't know what to choose here. <laughs> so I was given the option. You can do clothing and textile or photography. I was like, okay, I'm doing photography. And at the time it was film. So I had to go into the dark room and, and all that good stuff. So that's how my love for photography really started by doing graphic design. And then as you ask, how does it all work together? As right. a graphic designer and you working on all these magazines, all these different layouts, you have a different understanding of how you shoot an image to fit those different spaces. So a lot of times I'll get crap for, hey, you're not shooting tight enough. Right. You need to shoot tighter. And I'm like, I can't shoot tighter because if I shoot tighter, that's it. I don't have options. I like to shoot and have options. So if they need other sizes or other specifications, I can do that. I can deliver that without going and Photoshopping background. I, so I shoot with enough room for different things. So that's interesting for a couple of reasons. When we get into the photo later on today, I'm going to mention something kind of about what you just talked about in the shot that we're going to talk about. And my buddy, Christy Goodwin, who's an amazing music photographer, posted a shot that uh, an artist that she shot used her photo for a promo thing and put all the tour dates next to it. And Christy posted and said, this is why all my shots I end up shooting leaving copy room. Because yes. if you do a tight headshot, you're not going to lay tour dates over their face, right? Understanding nope. the relationships. To me, graphic design in so many ways is understanding the relationships of space, of things in space. And once you understand that, I think it can definitely change your photography. Today, as I mentioned, we're talking about a product shot, but even in your fashion and beauty stuff, I kind of see the graphic design things, but I am in, interested in this one. Of all the genres of photography, 
What drew you to fashion and beauty? You, you know, I'm watching a lot of fashion shows and I'm like, I'm, in, I'm always interested by that. I like the outfits, you know, like the Met Gala, you see all those elegant couture clothing. I like that kind of stuff. So it kind of pulled me towards that and then started shooting beauty images. I, I had to find a way to blend all the different fields into one where I think they work seamlessly with each other, whether it's beauty or the whole fashion or the product. It's, I think it's one family. Yeah, I agree with you completely. So here's a, here's a hard question. Let's pretend that Lenworth is teaching a five-minute fashion and beauty photography class. Five minutes. Where would your focus be in that five minutes? Wow, that's, that's hard. So in five minutes, it's understanding the basics. I think for all three, you have to be able to solve problem quickly. And once you understand problem solving, because when you're shooting a beauty image, you might run into problem that you won't with a product or you won't with a whole fashion deal, you know? So understanding how to solve those problems will help along with that. It's, it's kind of a deal where sourcing fashion outfits and finding beauty in people that you shoot, models for your beauty session or the products you shoot, you have to fully understand all three. Right. Okay. I like that. You've won a lot of awards. You've won multiple Muse Awards, Photoshop World Guru Award, uh, yeah. MIFA Award, Advertising MIFA Award. You've yeah. had magazine covers. You're a Kelby One instructor, by the way. What classes do you teach for Kelby? I teach uh, fashion and beauty for them. I also do uh, how to get published by magazines for them. And so where you're at in your career now, I mean, becoming the, the awards, the Kelby thing, that's that's a goal level, but you've attained those now. What What's, what's Lenworth's long-term goals in photography? Ah, long-term goal. To be the best in the game, though, I, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> when I look at some of the top pros, I, I always want to help people. You know, I, someone calls me, hey, how do I do this? And I can solve, help them to solve a problem or we figure it out together. That brings me joy, you right. know? Obviously, yes, we want to make money and all of that stuff, but teaching and helping other folks to grow and be better at their photography, it's its the end game. You know, we have all this knowledge. We have to spread it. You know, a lot of guys will hold the, the knowledge they don't want to share because they're scared. You know, I am not that guy. I, I get several calls. Hey, how do we do this? I I'll send you all the information you need. If you need more help, I'll, I'll do what I can to help. You know, I, I could not agree with you more. I interview some photographers that I have on this show that are of that mindset of, look, I've got this skill set. This is what keeps me ahead of other people. I need to keep it to myself. And it's something I don't agree with. My buddy, Don Komarechka, has said to me on numerous occasions that, look, because he is so open with his shots and mm -hmm. people will say something like, like one of them, it was, uh, was it ants? I think it was ants crawling on a twig or something like that. He does macro photography. And somebody commented something to the effect of, you know, the effect of, you know, those ants are, are dead or frozen or something. He's like, no, they're live. No, mm -hmm. they couldn't be. I do this. There's no way they could be. So he showed the behind the scenes and he showed everything. And he said to me something to the effect once paraphrasing, I can share everything that I do. I can share every way that I photograph a snowflake. You're still going to be behind me. Right? I don't have yes. to worry about you catching up to me. And even if you do catch up to me, you're not going to shoot the same shot as me. Right? I Absolutely. mean, that to me is what I love about this space. This, this photographic community is, 
is so fun. I want to get into the shot. And before we bring up the shot really quick, just a reminder, this show, first and foremost, is a podcast. So it's available wherever you get your podcasts in audio format. So, you know, Amazon Music, Google, Spotify, all of those type places, Apple Podcasts. If your podcast outlet of choice, like Apple Podcasts, supports video, then there is a separate video feed. You'll see behind the shot twice when you search for the show, a video and an audio only feed. Subscribe to both, one, whatever. If you would leave a review when you do, that would be fantastic. Hopefully a good review, but you know, whatever. And then uh, the video is also, of course, up on YouTube. And all the information, all the links that we mentioned on YouTube are down uh, below the like and subscribe button. The blog post is over at behindtheshot.tv. For every episode that I do, I've got all the links we talk about for today's show with Lenworth. Those are in the blog post. A little bit that I wrote about him. There's a small sample gallery of his work, and I want to jump into today's shot. The shot we're going to talk about today is interesting to me on a number of levels. I'm just going to call it a Chanel makeup product shot. Is that a fair assessment? That's a fair assessment. Okay. But there are so many things in this shot that I think, this is part of what I love about photography, actually. Sometimes we look at a photo and we go, oh, wow, it's got impact and it's, you know, whatever. It hits us in the face. You know, guitarist jumping in the air. Other times we look at a photo and we know that's magazine, right? I could see yeah. that in a major advertisement in Times Square. And other times it's a great documentary shot. It's fantastic, but we know how everything was done. This kind of combines all of that for me because at first glance, it's three pieces of product sitting on, on a backdrop. But when you dive in and you think about the assembly, the graphic design nature like we talked about, of yeah. this shot. That's why I wanted this one. So let's start with the the, the more technical end for those people that, that are into gear. What camera did you shoot this with? I'm using my my Canon R5. Uh, what lens? It's my 9 to mil. Okay. So 9 it's to a millimeter macro lens, yes. 2.8? 2.8. Uh, what about shutter, aperture, ISO? So we're shooting this at ISO 200, and this is at 1 125th of a second at F11, at 90 millimeters. And white balance is automatically set, or did you manually set it? it I ought to set the white balance for this one. And what about your mode? Are you a manual shooter, an aperture priority shooter? Always manual. So as, as far as that goes, I, I get a lot of questions question about whether to go aperture priority or, you know, auto or I, I like manual, you know, can the others do the job or get the job done? Yes, they can, but I'm a manual guy. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm going to, for those of you that are on the audio only feed, I'm going to describe this shot, hopefully without coughing in the middle. And again, if I miss muting one when I'm having a coughing attack because of the bronchitis, my apologies. Um, I'm coughing Lenworth's ear off today when I forget to hit mute. But this actually, it's kind of like I said a second ago. There's so much about this shot that I appreciate, right? Description-wise, it's not complex to tell somebody what's in the shot. Maybe the easiest description I've ever done. It's a top-down, straight-down, top-down shot of a three-piece Chanel makeup set. The three pieces are two makeup compacts and then a piece of lipstick. And they appear to be sitting on some kind of black fabric. I'm guessing it's, what is it, like a black velvet? Black velvet. It's, it's okay. a small piece of black velvet. And I, I like to use velvet because the way it absorbs that light and it, it works really well with, with product stuff. So I'm going to deviate here then. Before I describe any more, is the fact that that absorbs the light, is that what is giving me the separation? So your lighting is lighting the product, yes. but the backdrop's not showing any of that. So it's almost like you've got this separation going on. Yes. 
And, and I, I like to do that. If, if you look at, I think I have another uh, product shot on my website. If you look at it, you'll see kind of the same thing where the background doesn't really absorb much of that light. It's because of that black velvet and it, it soaks up that light so nicely that I, I love using these velvet for product photography. It works out really well here because the three pieces of makeup are black. You have two black yes. compacts and then the lipstick, the handle of the lipstick is black. So placing those on a black backdrop becomes a little bit of a nightmare of crushing those blacks and they, they blend into each other, but they don't here. The upper yes. right corner is a closed black Chanel compact. Yes. It has the white CC on it with the C pointing to the left and a C pointing to the right and a circle around it. There's no uh -huh. rotation. This thing is completely square to the shot itself. Center yeah. left. So that first compact, the closed one is in the upper right corner. Now move down to the center mark of the shot. All the way at the left, you've got a half open, which by the way, I, I think the fact it's half, half open is part of the brilliance here, right? This one is uh, an eyeshadow type compact, right? So it's got colors in it. And this is at 45 degrees, almost exactly. So if you picture it's, you're looking down at it and it opens up away from you, not towards you, but away from you. And then you rotate it to the left 45 degrees. You end up with this wonderful kind of now contrast to the square closed one. There are four colors of makeup, browns and golds. And there's two brushes pointing different ways. The brushes are also black handles inside of a black compact. The brushes themselves, the ends of the brushes are brand new. They're white, right? White. But again, opening it halfway allowed you to see the logo that's on the top, like on the other one. The closed compact, the logo's white. This compact, the logo appears to be like a goldish color. It gold, but it's yeah catching light and it's opened at just an angle where you can see it and you can recognize it, but you can see all four colors of the, the actual eyeshadow, the two front ones you can see in whole, the back ones, you can see about a third of them. The, the, and again, there's light inside this. We're going to get into lighting later. Then add to that. So you've done upper right, you've done center line, far left at 45 degrees. And now center of the image at the bottom, you have a lipstick item, perfectly new, perfect lipstick. So you have a black handle, then you have a wide silver area that narrows and then narrows to the barrel of the lipstick. And coming out of that barrel is a, 40, a perfect 45 degree slice of bright red lipstick. It's almost at 45 degrees. So it's about 40 degrees, I would guess. And yeah, it's almost there. Yeah, but see, that's killer because we're going to get into this because these are the questions I have on this image. The whites, the colors, the highlights in this image are all spot on. Like the exposure on this image could not be better. In the, in the rough description before we dive in in detail, did I miss anything I should have caught? No, I, I think you, you, you get it all. You know, there's a little thing to to the, the the eyeliners, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so let's start here. Before we get into the detailed questions I've got, tell me the story of this shot. What was this for? What was your idea? So this was a personal project, and I bought these uh, sometime in November, December to shoot. It was like, you know, I need to keep going at this product stuff. And I had it sitting on my table for a, a good while, a couple of months actually. And then I said, okay, it's shoot day. I actually shot this after we came back from, from imaging. And so when I set it up, it took about maybe an hour and a half, just playing with it, just at making those funny uh, tiny details and adjustment to to get it perfectly to where I wanted it, to where it looks good. 
you know, I opened, I closed and I adjusted and I took a shot. And I'm like, I'm not feeling it. So I walked away, did something else and came back. And when I made my adjustment, I took the first shot. Okay, this is it. That's when I started adjusting all my lights and, and, and placing it exactly how I, you see the shot. So the, so the first test shot was without lighting that you cared about. It was purely going for the positioning. The positioning. Positioning okay. in, is, is absolutely key, I think, when you're shooting products. Because how that product is placed, I think, is very important. You know, the way the viewer sees it, you know, is it pulling them in the angles you have, you know, what's going around it? As we mentioned earlier, copy space, you know, so I'm thinking about all that when I'm setting this up. So top down shots like this can be so difficult in that layout, right? Because, because yeah. again, you're getting into that graphic design world we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. The main compact here being, you know, straight, but the open one, not the open one showing the four colors, the, you know, back to only a third or halfway, the highlights and yeah. shadows on the silver part of that bright red lipstick though, that's stunningly done. I guess what my question is, especially now knowing that you played with positioning a lot before you actually then got into the lighting. How long, how many tries or how long did it take you to decide on this positioning? Like, for example, let's go to that half open compact. As you're looking through the top down, are you, are you aware of how much of that back row of, of makeup you see? And, and do you see that gold logo on the half open one? In other words, try and help me understand what Lenworth is thinking as he's, oh, let's turn it this way. Let's open it this much. What What's in your head? Okay. So when I'm shooting this, once I, I set the first one in the upper right with the white CC, I set that one first. And once I positioned that one and I know it was perfectly positioned, my only problem now was the other two, the lipstick and the open one. So I tackle them piece by piece. I played with the opening. I tried it fully open. It didn't give me the same feel as it, you know, closed like at a 45. It didn't give me the same vibe. So I, I tried it different openings, not seeing the two in the back, only seeing the two in the front. Didn't really like it, you know, close it down a lot where you could barely see the ones in the front, didn't like it. So when I got to this, where I opened it and I saw that I was like, okay, now the challenge becomes, how do I get those fully lit so the viewer can see that? And it's showing the texture on the blush and right. all that. As far as the, the lipstick goes, that was a little easier to set because once I have those are the two position, now it's just a matter of, positioning the lipstick to where it's creating that shape. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, I love the fact that you made the comment that you started with the, the closed compact with the white logo, because I see that almost as though you're placing an anchor, right? It's the clearest yes. logo. It's there's no, there's, there's nothing complex to decipher about it because it's closed. But it immediately yes. tells you in black and white, this is a Chanel ad, right? And I like that. You go to position the other ones and, and here's what I think, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, part of my love of this type of photography is you can take a shot like this and it can be passed off as somebody set stuff down on a black background and snapped a shot. But when done properly, Properly is maybe the wrong term. When done at this level, mm -hmm. this shot can work in so many different ways. You sent me this crop, vertical crop, basically yes. cropping the left up to that left hand compact and cropping the right hand side into that flat closed compact almost to the mm -hmm. white CC logo. And you end up to with a logo, vertical yeah. 
portrait orientation crop. And then I always need uh, like a 169 crop of an image when possible for the YouTube poster. And you recropped it this way. You cropped a third of the way up the handle of the lipstick from the bottom. The left and right are back to the original. And then you cropped down from the top almost to the white logo. So you've got those and then you've got this original. This one shot works yes. in multiple ways to allow for copy position, uh, uh, end usage model from one shot. When, from one shot. When you're setting it up, is all that in your head? I mean, are you really aware? I'm thinking about all of that. All of that is in the back of my, my mind because, and that, I, I guess that was one of the reasons it, it took me so long because I kept positioning and positioning and looking at the bigger picture. Like, how would I use this? You know, how would this place in a magazine? So I walked in, I grabbed a magazine, I looked at the page and I'm here in my head, I'm framing this out on that page. Right. If they put copy here, do they have enough space? How would it look? And I'm framing all that in my head while I'm setting up this shot. So you do your positioning, you do your, I'll call it a test shot for sake of conversation to figure out yeah. the layout, the graphic design that you want. Which by the way, I think, I, uh, here's the problem with my show. Landscape photographers see that I'm doing a product photography shot and they go, I don't need to see that. But that's so wrong, right? Because you can, in looking at the graphic design nature of this, the interrelational aspects of where these are placed, that can be taken to wedding and fashion and landscape. And in me, music photography, I learned layering yeah. You know, the reason I try and layer my live music shots is because I learned from landscape photographers that I like. Yes. But this is where I see, I, th I think, I see images, product shots that are not as strong as this. Mm -hmm. Part of it can be the, the creator of the image doesn't take enough time. Like they lay it out. It looks good to them and they shoot it and they don't really think about that overarching end use model, right? But it's the lighting. Yes. Lighting this to me isn't easy. And, and let me explain why and then you tell me where I'm stupid or wrong. First of all, black containers on a back background, as I mentioned earlier, separation's a problem. The one that's straight down lights up really well because it's closed, but the one that's half open that back lid is shadowed and it's dark and could easily blend into that, that surface. Background, yes. But it doesn't. Secondly, you have lots of reflective surfaces. Like you could end up even on that closed black compact with highlights that you don't want and you've got the chrome on the lipstick. The inside of the open one, I can see highlight light. So where the, where the four colors of eyeshadow are, there's... There's like, they're, they're round. I don't know if somebody out there has yeah. never seen inside a makeup thing, but they're little round pieces of makeup and the black in between dips down. And so in front of those back two that are only half showing, you see a highlight of light there, the white on the brushes you see there. When you're doing something like this, how do you assemble the lighting to make sure that what you want lit is lit without specular highlights that you don't want. And then what lighting setup do you end up with? Okay. So let me back up just a bit. Typically what I would do for other product shots, I didn't do for this one. I would set up a scrim with a 216 leaf filter to get the gradient and, and doing all that stuff using strip boxes to shape that light and, and get those gradients going. I didn't do that for this one. I went with the light cone. So the light cone from V flat world and I place it around the product over the product. So the lens is just barely sitting at the top of that cone pointing down. Then I'm adjusting those lights around the cone. I can see 
what's happening when I move the light. Now, for the back to um, makeup. Uh, let, let, me, let me interrupt you. Explain the light cone. So the light cone is, it's almost like a uh, sheer diffuser. It's almost oh, like it's, a, a it's like a it's little. like a jewelry photography box type thing. It, it's not a box. It's you know those uh, thing you would put around a dog's neck yeah. when they yeah. It's similar to that, but translucent or is it solid? Translucent material, and it it has the diffusion, and it's it's ready. So you you clip the the sides. There's like three little clips on there. So you would click that, put it around the product, and you point your light through through that. So you're using okay. beer bulb. You're not using a strip box or any kind of modifiers. It's just beer bulb. Because the cone's the giving you the diffusion. The, the, the cone's giving the diffusion. Okay, I'm sorry. So the, the two in the back, the two blushes in the back, now... If that makeup kit is open fully, you'll see there's a mirror underneath. So I had to position the light so the light shines up to hit that mirror to oh cast the God. light back down on those makeup to illuminate those and, and, and light them. That's reflected from the mirror, that light that I see in between all the four makeups? That light you see right there is reflected from the mirror. So I have a light. So if this is your product, I have a light like pointing up here on that light cone. That's, that's smart. I love that. Okay, go ahead. So it's, I use four lights and each area is carefully placed. Each of those lights is carefully placed. You know, I'm, I'm adjusting and moving. I'm seeing what it does. And as far as the the lipstick goes, that black line you see coming down, that's giving that highlight coming down, that bringing back that metallic feel, that is just raising up that light cone just to hear off the table. I just put like a small nail underneath it just to raise it up just a tad. And once that raises it up, it gives you that edge because now there is no light going all the way down. So it's shooting these. You have to be able to look at it, analyze it and solve the problem. Did you. So but that brings in the question, then, did you know that would work or were you in there with a little nail lifting that thing up going, oh, look at that. There's a line. So that that's funny. So. I'm adjusting this. I took the cone off. I take a shot. I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. Put the cone back on. So while putting down the cone, I'm moving it up and down like this, moving it up and down, seeing what it's doing. All the lights are set in position. And now the final thing, as I go down, I can see the shade coming in. And I'm like, okay, that's exactly where I want it. So I grab a small nail, just place it on the there. Hold it up, took the shot, bam, and here we have it. So that's effectively the edge of the cone the edge blocking of the a cone little part of the light. In, yes. Okay. Because, oh, God damn it. So here's the funny thing. One of my questions was, how'd you get the shadow on the silver? A part of me was thinking, did he do it in post? The other part of me was thinking, did he did he use an alligator clip and hold something, which I suppose you probably could do. You could probably add alligator clip something in between the light, but I don't think you'd get the softness of that shadow. Yes. And a lot of times I will do that where I'll, well, you know, put a piece of black tape somewhere to to get, you know, shadows and do stuff like that. But in this case, all I had to do was just raise it up just to hear, just to get that line going down. So four lights. Four I need lights. to know what the lights were and kind of where they are in this shot, because I know I'm going to be wrong because I would have never guessed that was a mirror reflecting the one. It looks as though you have the one hitting the mirror and that's probably also, you know, so bottom right hand corner hitting yeah, the mirror. It's pointing up. And that's my Godox AD600 just pointing up. 
And is that also lighting the front of the lipstick? And it's also lighting the front of the lipstick. Okay, so then you have another one. The, the lipstick angle coming up, shooting up. And so where the it hits the mirror, it pushes the light back down. Because when I did that first, I had to adjust the lipstick because too much light was coming back on that lipstick that I didn't want. So it was highlighting that edge that's closer to the, the makeup way too much. So I had to pull it back, adjust the light, and then set it again. So, okay, okay, hold on. So the front of the lipstick is that up mm -hmm. light, now I'm going to call it an up light, that's also hitting the mirror and lighting the inside of the compact. Then you have that yeah. shadow edge. Mm -hmm. Is it the light from the mirror that's lighting the back side of the lipstick, or is there a separate light upper left? There's a there's a light on the left. So let me see if I can paint the picture. Camera coming down. There's a light right here going up. There's one on the other side over here going straight in to that mirror. Coming up, going straight into that mirror. And there's one on the back side over here shining down, giving that edge on the back where you have the the light in the gold okay. on the right. back so there's one coming down from that side and then you have one going straight from the opposite end lighting giving the shape that that gradient on the clothes so that you can see the back side with the logo yes and and these are all godox lights all godox lights Okay. So I have uh, two 600s in there, uh, two 400s, and they're all beer, beer bulbs. No, no modifiers on them, beer bulbs. Because you've got the diffusion from the cone. Because I have that diffusion. So as you're moving these lights around, trying to figure out your positioning, did you run into anything that, that tripped you up and made you have to really rethink it? The hardest part was just finding that sweet spot for to place the light. Because I'm using all these boom arms, you know, and light stand just to get it just right and, and just moving. And I, you know, I'm watching the live view on the on the computer monitor. So while I'm adjusting those light, I can see what is happening. So once I get it to where I I, I want it, bam, I set that light, do a test. If it's perfect. I leave it alone, and I'm just adjusting light up or down. So you were tethered shooting this? Yes, I was tethered to uh, Capture One, shooting straight into Capture okay. One. Okay. So I always you get this shoot shot. tethered. How, how, long, how long did this take you, do you think? Um, the whole process was about two hours. Okay. You get the From shot. From start to finish, you know, just kind of setting up, playing around with it, about two hours. Right. Okay. Once it's done and you bring this thing into Capture One to start doing your editing, obviously you mentioned you're a Capture One user. Any other apps you can't live without? Uh, Photoshop. I use Photoshop a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm back and forth between Photoshop and, and Capture One. Those are my two main. And what might you in post, what might you have done to a shot like this? So uh, in post, all I'm doing is it's, not much. It's just cleaning up like any dust that's there that you can see that I missed or, you know, There's none adjusting in the, the highlights. It's sharpening. I always add a little sharpening at the end. And so it's not much that's done in Photoshop. The whole Photoshop process takes maybe five minutes. Took off some dust and sharpen up and I was done because I had it right in camera. I have to ask then because there's a million ways to sharpen in Photoshop. You do your blemish touch up, we'll call it, right? For for mm -hmm. dust and stuff. What technique do you use for your sharpening? Unsharp mask, or I might use um, retouch for me. They have this new sharpening deal where I like it, like at 11%. I like to use it right there. I think that's like a sweet spot. So that's, that's you know, right there where I'm using it. It's not, I don't have like a long process of, you know, doing this, 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 that now it's just sharp and 11% boom done on a re, you know, that's, it's very simple. 
it came out so good, dude. Really love this shot. Is there anything else I should know about this shot? I didn't ask. Huh? No, I think you, you touched it all. Um, the complexities of, of, of getting the shot. It's, you know, the only thing I would say to folks, if you're shooting products, you're using gloves, you know, and make sure you have can air to blow away dust and, you know, microfiber cloth to polish down those reflective surfaces. You're not going to get rid of all the dust, but whatever is left, you can Photoshop that out try to get it right in camera so your Photoshop process is less. Because we're not taking the picture in Photoshop. Like, get it right in camera. It's so funny because the, the reason I always, I don't always, sometimes I forget. But the reason a lot of times I like to say, is there anything I should have asked is because, I'll be honest with you, never thought about the can of air makes total sense. And I never thought yes. about wearing gloves, right? Because- yes. It's a black compact. A fingerprint in the middle of that thing would ruin the shot. Very, very good tip. Okay. Yes. I always use those, uh, you know, gloves and I have tons of them right around. If they're doing any product, put my gloves on. I like it. Beautiful shot, Lenworth. Absolutely beautiful shot. Let's switch gears. Thank We're going to go into a speed round. For the speed round, I ask a question. You just fire back whatever answer comes to the top of your head. First question your top product photography tip? Problem solving. Top fashion or beauty photography tip? Production value. Oh God, these are good. Okay. Biggest photo mistake you made or almost made? I did a whole shoot and there was no card in the camera. You're the guy. Okay. Favorite composition rule if you have one. I love rule of thirds. That's probably my favorite too. Rule of thirds. Uh, favorite band or performer? Huh. Favorite band or performer. I'm going to have to go with Michael Jackson. Favorite drink? Jamaican rum. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, favorite movie or TV show? Mission Impossible. The the movies or the original TV show? The movies. Mission Impossible, yeah. the movies. I love that series. And it's amazing still to this day to me. Yes. Uh, at the age that he's become, that Tom Cruise still does all his own stunts, it's, or at least most yeah, of them. It's epic. So final question, is there a photographer out there that you think more people should know about? Uh, hmm. I would have to go with Mary Bell. She is an awesome photographer. She does, she does um, fashion. She does beauty. She does a lot of self-portraits and fine arts. Absolutely awesome. She's also a Kelby One instructor. What's the name again? Mary Bell. Mary Bell. Okay. I will have a link to Mary's work or website or Instagram or something like that in the show notes over at BehindTheShot.tv and in the description down on YouTube. And Lenworth, if people want to find you online, your Kelby stuff, all that, where can people go? Uh Instagram. I'm on Instagram at lenwork.johnson. Or if you go over to Kelby One and you want to watch my classes, it's uh, kelbyone.com, uh, online training. And um, on LinkedIn also, you can also visit my website at Lenwork Johnson Photography or lenworkjohnson.com. Okay, that sounds good. So lenworthjohnson.com. Instagram is lenworth.johnson. Facebook, mm -hmm. Photography LJ. And then Twitter or X, formerly known as Twitter, yes. LJ underscore photography one. All the yes. links are in the show notes over at behindtheshot.tv. Lenworth, it, again, fantastic to see you. I hope I see you at Imaging next year if I end up going, but I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of walk us through how you made this thing. 
Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Again, thank you to my guest, Lenworth Johnson. You can find his uh, classes over at Kelby One. You can find him at lenworthjohnson.com. And of course, if you go to the blog post over at behindtheshot.tv, I've got all of his links there. So it'll make it easy for you. I've got a small sample gallery of his work. I wrote a little bit about him there as well. Plus, if you had to, if you're watching on YouTube and you head down below the like and subscribe button, you'll find in the description not everything I wrote about him in the blog post, but any of the links that we mentioned during the show. My name is Steve Brazel. If you want to find me, you can do that as well. I'm on social media. It's at Steve Brazel almost everywhere. Mastodon, Blue Sky, X. Uh, Instagram, those are all at Steve Brazel, Steve Brazel Photography on Facebook, but I don't use Facebook. If you want to find the uh, the podcast online as far as social media, it's at Behind the Shot TV pretty much everywhere that you go. And please follow me, send any questions that you got, leave any comments down below. Again, if you'd leave a review wherever you're getting this podcast, it would be much, much appreciated. Make sure that you join us next time as we try and get inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind the shot.